Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel, the California Beekeeper. Hey, I'm Jose, we are here in Williams, California. We're gonna meet up with a beekeeper out of Turlock. We're brokering some bees from him to put into our orchard here in Williams. We are here. These are very familiar stomping grounds here. I've put bees into all these orchards. I mean, there's probably not one orchard I have not put bees in Williams uh, throughout, you know, my 13 years of putting bees, placing bees. I've put them all over this area. This soil gets really, really sloppy. They're on stands here, look at that. So hopefully those stands aren't going to be uh, needed because, man, flooded bees are not fun. I mean, we know firsthand what flooded bees, is, what that looks like, and it's horrible. There's Towsers right there. Uh, here's some more bees and some stands. I believe that's, uh, I don't know, I, we know most of these guys that come and place bees here. This might be a beekeeper right up here. No, no beekeeper. We're gonna go meet up, go over the orchard and make sure everything's flagged and prepared. It's gonna be fun, man. We'll take you along with us to kind of see what we do over the maps. Always double check and make sure that the grower flagged our drops. Make sure all the drops are there. It's something that's pretty important for us to do uh, prior to moving the bees in. You gotta scout this orchard first in case there's any, you know, fallen trees, uh, ditches that uh, aren't, aren't, you're not able to see on Google Maps. Uh, so yeah, here's the beginning of the orchard here. Come on, dude. We're over here, got Eddie Martinez. Nice to meet you Martinez nice to meet you bees. Oh yeah, let's see what he, what he brought. Let's, Oh, look at that. Yeah, I know that all beekeepers are in different areas, so why not uh -huh. a little bit of our folder? There you go. I actually brought you something. I had, well, we're going to have to swap stuff, huh? Okay, okay. There you go. So now what we're doing, we're just both going over the orchard. He's marking the flags to make sure that we have all our flags. That way he comes in at night, he's not uh, he's not missing flags. And it has some direction because if you guys ever place bees in orchards and you don't have flags, it's a mess, man. I'm trying to figure it out, count trees, and so flagging is pretty important to make sure that uh, the grower gets the bees where they want them. Right here's uh, the center row that I was telling you. Okay. And you can see the flags right in the. Yeah. In the, and right here on the middle ones, do you guys want them on this side or on this side? It could be both. On both? It could okay. be on both, yeah, because the tractors don't really move around, but mm -hmm. maybe leave enough to um, pass through. Yeah, I put cualquier cosa. Yeah. No, yeah. if anything, right now, um, once we finish going through it, I'll, uh, I still like to just walk around. Yeah, check out the stuff. Yeah, I, I just like walking, making sure que si voy a estar todos los puntos, and just yeah. little stuff like that. Um, How far are these called? buds? Two weeks, week and a half. Yeah. I'll give you guys a closer look here at those buds. Once we, this was a warm week. It's supposed to rain Monday, so. And this isn't my truck, this is Eddie's truck. He doesn't like to drive an orchard, so he let me drive it because I'm experienced. <laughs> Look at that, man. It's all fancy over here. That's that pollination check right there. Woo! Or is that hard work, dude? Hard work. Oh, we gotta call the grower really quick because we are missing flags here, here, here to let us know where we're coming in. There is these old points that they used to use, but I don't know if they use them anymore. So these orange reflectors, those are all the old style of um, the ranch where they used to have it where 
this is the B lane or the B row. Check out these buds. Yeah, they're swelling a little bit. They got, yeah, two weeks. Two weeks easy. We got Eddie going down to check the, if that's the first flag. I just just knew about those reflectors that identified the B row. So we just want to verify that those are flags down there. If it, they are, then we're going to go ahead and flag this side and this side of the B row. That way the guys know it's in between the flaggers and go right in. But let's go ahead and give the uh, the grower a call. Let them know that we're gonna go ahead and flag these or if you could just send somebody out to flag it. You reach the boys. I'm gonna reach them off to flag these two points really quick. And, and if he needs to change them, I'll leave him a voicemail just to let him know. Uh, we went ahead and flagged where we believe the first drops are at the B row uh, can you go check them make sure that um, that we're correct so let's go walk down here and kind of see what's going on so we're just the goal is to try to make it before move everything in before the rains it's gonna be raining in a few days next week so really that's that's the goal is to get everything in before it gets wet and sloppy these are old they call them mummies and uh these are leftover nuts almonds that when they come and shake the trees they'll shake the trees and sometimes they won't shake all the nuts so these will stay on there they'll get moldy and uh they'll come you'll have a bunch of workers just in rows every single row with these long sticks and they're reaching in there and just tapping these branches, knocking these mummies down. It's pretty neat. If uh, we come across anything like that, we'll have to show you guys. Because it's just rows and rows of workers on each side. Just with these big old long poles. Bah, bah, bah. Also, it gets very, very nippy in these, um, in these B rows at night. It is freezing. Um, especially when you're on the forklift, you have to mask up. So I'm full. I got a beanie. I have a face mask. Got my cart heart. Got my thermals. It gets cold and very chilly. Imagine being a kid in an orchard playing hide and seek. It is. You get lost in an orchard at night. It's not fun, man. Um, what helps is having on Google, you can put all your bee drops. That's thing that's, that's awesome. You, you just put all your bee drops and once you get closer to those points, you know that you're at those, those bee drops. That's what's good about that. But also when you're out in the country, you don't have reception. So you gotta keep those Google Maps on prior to getting into the orchard. Well, I think Eddie ditched me because I cannot find him. Came across some, some workers down there. They're digging up an old tree. Please leave your message for- Tried calling him. Like I said, you get into the country in these orchards and there is sometimes no reception, man. Uh, but it's always good to know if you have reception or not. That's why it's good to scout. Because if you need to communicate with the employees or other beekeepers, um, you gotta be aware of these little things, little details that could affect your game plan. So, now we're just gonna walk back to the truck and see if he's, let's see if the truck's even there. We just got a call from the grower and those drops that we were missing as far as flags, the drops weren't necessarily missing. There was some in the insides, but the exterior and the outer lane of the um, orchard, they weren't flagged. So it's always important to know from the outside um, those, those points also, so you can drive around the orchard because typically you can come down the straight row with the forklift 
but if those drops are like these drops are 24 it's much more efficient to drive the flatbed with the bees and go to the other side of the orchard and do your drops but those drops that we were missing so these three are going to be moving inward um, because he said that the fields get a little wet over there so he says that they'll be safer here in this center row and a lot of orchards have these wider lanes for different reasons i'm sure um, but it works out great for us the beekeepers because we could drive the trucks in through these big wide areas and offload from both sides so you park you stage and you're able to offload boom boom left and right and the guy stays on the forklift follows you to the next drop and then there you go again all right we'll meet you guys back in the truck okay he's gonna put the bees in he knows that he's gonna flag it with his uh, with his flagging tape and he'll know he needs to go into the slots in there I you guys told you about orchard mud dude it is it's like clay a thing every every stride you take you got five pounds of mud on your boots so what he's planning is offloading here he'll stage his truck and the bees go over over this hump here i think it was maybe 10 years ago i placed bees in this orchard and i was able to just go over these humps they're not too bad but when it gets muddy it's it's, it's mess all right that's it for the scoping the yard guys uh here with eddie martinez with martinez bees rocking his uh new california beekeeper hat all right it was a pleasure sir all right we'll see you man all right guys hope you enjoyed this video if you haven't already subscribed go down below smash that subscribe button give us a big thumbs up on this video guys over here i have to go into the office to the grower and uh go get our our contract squared away but a lot of beekeepers to this good safe area this is one of our buddies from wyoming river road honey and nathan patrick there's another beekeeper they're out of montana go into the office get our stuff and go home okay so i'm here in williams california and I had to get some tacos really quick we're gonna eat if you guys are ever out in California for almond pollination, I'm telling you what, if you're in this area, these tacos are delicious. And they have all sorts of tacos. <laughs> Gotta make sure you get some tacos, man. If you're ever in California, any part of California, go to one of those taco trucks, man. Best tacos you'll ever have in your life. So we are gonna get some tripas. We're gonna get intestines. If you guys ever had intestines, we're gonna get three of those. Three asala and I'm not sure I'm gonna I might try the buche. It's the stomach, the pig stomach. So we're gonna go ahead. We're gonna try one taco of that. So tres tripas, tres tacos de tripa, tres de asada, y uno de, de buche. Si, por favor. It's about to go down, guys. Look at that. Oh my god a little windy so i i can't i gotta be careful because if these tacos fall holy smokes i am crying let's go to our truck bed and, and chow down my truck bed is a little dirty let's go on this side look at that all right guys which one should we dig in first you have to get your lime okay just just put that lime everywhere Got to be generous with this. Look at that. Just go all the way loop to loop. All the fixings, the onions, and 
and uh, Kelly usually eats this for me, I don't. But anyway, look at this, guys. Mm -mm -mm. Just a moment. Oh yeah, that's good. I love tacos. I love them. So that was the Sada taco. Let's find the buche. Here we go. It has a little bit of meat. It's kind of like a, well, pig stomach, I guess. Oh, wow. A little chewy. It's pretty good. The, fla the flavor is amazing. But I'm sure someone else can probably mess this up. This place, I mean, I think they nailed it. It's good. So now, for my favorite, all time favorite tacos, we'll just call it three pies. We want to say it's intestines, okay, guys? They're fried up nice and good. Try this bad boy. Mm, mm, mm. Woo. That's good. Came here a couple times during pollination. They nail it. It's good stuff, man. Well, guys, that's what's left. A couple little onions. Time to go home. We'll see you guys. Yeah.